Welcome to Apex Esports League. Tonight we have round two of the Hamper HQ GT3 World Tour for Project Cars 2 on the PS4. And for tonight's round, we are at Azure Circuit. And if you are unfamiliar with Azure Circuit, it is Monaco. So it is a lot of walls, not many passing opportunities, and we are getting some of the drivers saying they have some very tight times, so it's going to be very exciting. So tonight's session, we have a practice of 15 minutes, weather is white, light cloud, then into qualifying for 15 minutes, weather is medium cloud, into the sprint race, 11 laps with weather light cloud, there's no mandatory pit, then we'll have about a 9 minute break and then head over into session 2. So qualifying will be 15 minutes, weather clear, and then for our main race is 20 laps, weather is clear to medium cloud with a mandatory pit being required. Last week we saw Gallon 350 take a Sorry, a double win, so a win in the sprint and also in the main race. So that's seen him get ahead on the championship. She's currently leading the championship with 138 points. We even triple seven, following behind with 91 points, and a 0, 143 with 87. And that's very closely followed behind by Bertie with 84 points. So keeping an eye on those drivers tonight. Um, and then, of course, we did see Gowan take the fastest lap in both the races last week. So I'll have a quick look at the track. So as you can see in France, track length is 3.34 kilometers with 19 turns. So very twisty, lots of walls, lots of potential incidents. So, wait for this to load up. See who gets out onto the track first. seen a lot of McLarens being the car of choice, followed by that is the Ferraris. That's a very poor camera angle. Rooney's out on track in his McLaren. And that bumper already looking like, sorry the bonnet, looking like it's already taken a hit. And if you're joining us for the stream don't forget to say hello, you can see you in the chat. There's also various sound controls down below. Be sure to get involved, have some fun with some sound effects over the stream, play some cheers, boos, and other effects. And let us know who you think's going to get pole position and also take the win in the races. So, Gallon 350 being our current leader in the championship, very tight turns around these hairpins. We're expecting Weaver not to make it for the rest of the rounds. He is able to make it tonight, so we get to see him for another round. Missing a couple of other drivers. Hopefully they may join during the session. We could see a couple more. If we can get a full grid, it will be quite nice to see some fierce competition around this very tight technical track. So there's only a couple of passing opportunities on this track. The drivers are very consistent in their times, like we saw in last week's round. It'll be very hard to try and find an opportunity for a pass. So there'll be some very fierce competition throughout. Can hear someone revving it up? Sounds like they may have spun out. Get him in effects in the Ferrari. Rasberg also in McLaren. That's not too bad of a pit exit. That's a reasonably safe spot. Drivers do have to make sure they do stay within that yellow line that entire way around. It is quite easy to get on the gas a little bit early, get a little bit too confident heading into turn one. And if you do cross that line, you can actually receive a penalty for an unsafe pit exit. Zero. Zero is in the McLaren. Santi is in the Ferrari. I think that's Rooney in the McLaren sitting right behind Weaven at the moment. Yeah, there's some definitely damage showing to Rooney's car. Looks, oh, he's taken a hit there. I think that may be a bit of, that's some lag going on for Rooney. He's skiing 
all the way across the track. That was noted to the drivers. Oh, he's made a hit. That would be caused by lag. Okay. Briefing the drivers before the round, making sure that they have proximity sensors turned on and also driver names so that they can actually check each other's latency as you need to give a little bit of space to allow for any different positions that they actually may be on track when they are racing very tight amongst each other if their ping is 500 milliseconds and you are only half a second off their tail that means you could actually be technically already just about touching however on your screen you would be seeing something different a lot of our incidents that do occur, if you do follow us on our pages, a lot of incident reports do tend to actually be the result of lag incidents. That dirty in the big Bentley, that thing is going to be very difficult to try and get around these hairpins. And he does do it with a controller as well, and he still performs very well. Nice shot going through the underpass. And, he, oh, and he's just about cut that corner. It is very tricky trying to get onto the brakes, going down that slight slope into the chicane. First time coming through, so the Zero's got a 1.36. Coming up to starting a new lap, so we might jump on board and check out the track. Very technical in that last corner. You can get a nice line, you can actually get a quite a good exit speed coming out of that. So on to pit straight. Nice fast line. You gotta make sure you don't turn early into that corner. You do see two curves. So there is a curb on the inside of that pit exit line. You have to look for that curb lining in the middle. So you can usually go pretty quick around here, nice line, a bit of a slide down into here, then power straight back down. A little bit off camber coming down into the hairpins. What makes it difficult with this game is not being able to look into the turns too much. So you usually do tend to either understeer or oversteer in those double hairpins. A nice line here actually can have you coming out quite early on the throttle and then flat out in the underpass. Oh, some wall contact. Hopefully he doesn't bring that in so we can actually get a full lap with him here. And you can tend to lock that car up coming down into the little chicane. Flat out here, a tap of the brakes, and then a nice fast corner. You can bounce that car through those ripple strips. You can actually cut that corner a fair bit as we just saw him get that wheel up over that little concrete ledge. And this section here is quite confusing, as that is also the pit entry. You don't want to turn a little bit too early and then find yourself facing the entry to the pits. And then with the mandatory pits being on for the second race, that will be a very tricky spot. So drivers should probably make themselves aware. Oh, so he's gone off in the wrong way there. Drivers will need to make sure that they're aware of the pit entry and just how long they have until they reach the cones to know when to bring that car up to the speed limit of 60 k's an hour. Otherwise they could be facing a DQ or a heavy time infringement penalty coming into those pits relatively quick. We'll usually see them take about 50 second time penalty. Otherwise, if they're in high excess, it'll actually be a DQ straight away. So thanks for joining us too, John. Are you racing as well? Yes, a bit of... Jono is also loaded up in the, ch in the chat as well. He was in the race for a moment. Giant 07 is the only one in the Nissan. I thought it would have been a more popular selection. Got that and then the Ferrari. And then looking back through our records, we did open up 
Apex Esports League's first series being at the GT3 World Tour. And it was actually Angry Old Fella, if you remember from past series, he actually won that and he was in a Corvette, I think it was. A very quiet car compared to the McLaren. If you're new to our streams, be sure to hit that follow button as well. It'd be appreciated if you can help us grow our following number. And you'll be notified of any of our races as they go live. We also have our YouTube channel, as you would see down below. All past broadcasts get uploaded to there, as we can't keep them forever on Twitch. So you can go back through and watch any races. It's a gallon 350 has parked that car. Just on pit exit, I think, just before. So he's currently got the quickest time, 1.33. So I was expecting 1.33s from what the drivers were mentioning they were getting. It's 1.33 qualifying times, and then what about 1.34 for race pace? So pretty tight and very quick indeed. And we just had someone stop. I think that may be Strasberg that has just stopped that car. Is that his car? No, he was in the blue one. That's Sami's car. She's brought that back into the pits. Uh, Gallant's Ferrari showing a fair bit of damage. That's when he had that lag incident with Rooney. And R12 on the field. Hopefully we do get a couple more join later on, but I think it will be quite intense racing with 12 as it is. And these drivers are competing for quite a great prize as well. Flash of the lights by Gallon, he's probably just over at the stream. Usually he has it running while it's on. In the matching team colours for Gallon. Oh, big broad slide. I think traffic's going to come around and he's got that back into the pits in time. And he's kind of looking quite bruised and battered already. Oh, he's having some issues. I'm not sure if it may still be a result of lag. That is a nice slide through those corners, as we were mentioning when we are on board with the Zero. You can go flat out through there, bounce that car rib to rib. Demon effects for the championship. He's currently coming fifth, so he's got 68 points. It's about first four. Uh, all within contending points at the moment. So Gallon has a good little lead because he did qualify first and second in those races and taking the wins. And drivers do receive points for qualifying position as well. So they need to ensure they get a good starting position to secure some extra points. And pretty tight so far. There's only four seconds separating our first eight. So far it looks like Ferrari is leading the way. If you want to keep up to date with all our results and standings and the instant reports, don't forget to head to our Facebook link. It's down below at the bottom of the stream. And you can also head over to our group from there, which has all our event details. And if we also have the Android app as well. If you search for Apex Esports League, we do have that, so that will have links to head into our broadcast much easier and look for all our past broadcasts, have all our details for results and standings as well. I think that may be Lamborghini that Simo is driving. That's a very broad, nice sound. McLaren has the nicest roar out of all the cars so far, so with two minutes left of practice. Oh, and Birdie's just made wall contact. And then courtesy to our sponsors, Hamper HQ. So it's hamperhq.com.au. They are providing the winner of this series 
a lovely hamper with some great gifts in it of alcohol, snacks and the likes. It's been to the value of $165. So that's a pretty good prize for one of these drivers to be taking home. And this does finish in the week before Christmas. So that'll be a lovely prize to have secured ready for Christmas time. is called the Christmas Barbecue Cheer so if you do head over to their website and check them out that is the prize that they are getting and if you think it looks good you can even secure it yourself or send it off to a loved one it's a very handy little system to have if loved ones are far away and you can't get to them to see them before Christmas you can send them a lovely hamper instead they do have quite a large variety as well on their website. Be sure to go and check them out. As the normal in the foot, she's been there for a little while. Gallon's currently got the quickest time, a 133.138. We're even close behind, only by 0.162 of a second. And to the other orange McLaren. Nice line, just a tiny bit of wall scrape. Going on weaving in the Ferraris, leading the practice session. That is practice complete. That is now on last laps. So they got 95 seconds to complete these last laps, which is quite easy considering they're doing minute 30 freeze around Monaco that is very tight 13 seconds separating the field to Sami the skyline also ooh, a bit of wall contact not sure if that's Weaven or Yellen yeah, I think it's Weaven's car coming up behind oh and he just scrapes that wall it was a very broad slide so seeing the map there's not too many chances for a pass there'll be plenty of passes in this section you can actually take quite a different line going up into that area which is actually still quite quick if you do get used to it and he's brought that car in the last lap for John and he's just crossed it so special finish for him Strasberg has 35 seconds to finish his last lap he's currently doing a 137 Is practice session completed. So once this loads over, so we have Gallon 350 taking the fastest lap in the practice session, so 133.138, and then we have five and a half seconds separating our first 10, and a little bit of a time difference from Gina and Sami with seven seconds and 13 seconds difference. I'm sure they'll probably fine tune their cars a little bit more. And find a few extra seconds in the qualifying session. There is full custom setups for the cars. A little bit of a mix of car, there won't be too much for sharing setups. However, since there is quite a heavy field of McLarens, there's a possibility that the guys will be sharing some setups. The drivers quickly scrambling out of the pits and now got 15 minutes for qualifying. Tire temperatures should get up to scratch pretty quick. Rainy needing to be cautious. Crosses that line. Feels quite quick onto it. If they cross that line they will get a warning. Could be a good place penalty. And they do need to ensure they have a pit limiter set as well. Remember to push that button. Only thing to get around Santi. That's Sami's McLaren, yes. So you cut that curb a fair bit. That's fine for the opening lap. Very tight. The room is getting around quite early. to be 
kind of cautious just whereabouts you are sitting when there is a bit of traffic coming into qualifying can come to your advantage or it could be a disadvantage as well you could get stuck behind and at least slowed up just a little bit but if you've got someone that's got some nice pace just ahead of you you could actually find yourself tucking in behind them and taking advantage of some slip streams and be able to shave a, a second off here and there Doing well in that Ferrari. In the sprint race last week, the Watkins Glen Demon Effects qualified fourth, then managed to finish in eighth. But after qualifying second in the main race, ended up finishing in eighth position. So a bit of bad luck during the races, but showing some very strong pace. Hopefully, some better luck for him. To with tonight's round. Since some fantastic driving out of Demon Effects throughout the series since he started with us. It's a pleasure to see him. Nice sound coming out of that Lamborghini. And is a normal. He's also in a black and orange McLaren. I saw him mostly with hits in the practice session. We should start seeing first times come up on the board very shortly. Not getting oh, very tight cut on that corner. So we'll jump on board with Bertie just so you can see how much difficulty the big Bentley Continental will be to make some of these more technical turn, turns. Turns, that was a wrong word to use. I do have a little bit of a raspy throat tonight, so bear with me with my voice. Very tight. Oh, it's going to, oh, a few hits and scrapes. But he says with driving the car with control he doesn't actually adjust any of the sensitivities he just runs it as default so I don't even know how he manages to even get the car around in a lap let alone win races like he does so it's quite phenomenal how he does it he may need to adjust some settings for a little bit more sensitivity in the steering to try and get this Bentley to try and cooperate with him on this track very loud cackle those shifts. So even in the faster turns we can get a little bit of a broad slide. I think we just had Strasbourg by the look of it go off. So have a look here as he tries to navigate this turn. Oh that is really difficult to try and turn. He's gonna have to get that right down a very slow speed to try and make that turn or we'll possibly look at making some sensitivity adjustments well I'm not sure what was going for weaving there it may have lost control and tried to gain control back over that car Gallon's coming in with the 133s again same with weaving they're about on par with the practice session Allen can keep that time. So it's 20 points up for grabs for taking pole position. And there is 30 points up for grabs for taking a win in the sprint race. And the main race is worth 60 points. And he's had a spin around as well. Now, as anomal's going, she's currently sitting as 8 for 54 points in the championship. It's a qualified ninth in the spring, finished in 10th. Qualified ninth in the main race last week, and then finished in fifth position. And he did have some grid place penalties as well, if you do recall, and you were joining us for last week's race. But he's quite a good recovery 
in that main race when he took a two group place penalty, which saw him qualify into ninth, so he did actually qualify seventh. So no drivers with any grid place penalties tonight. So they are being very cautious. We did the same spin out that last lap, so his opening time is two minutes. As we doing some good pace at the moment. Nice line through the chicanes. See how he goes with this tricky corner, almost making wall contact. Very nice line through the last corners. That's a big improvement. He's now in the 136s. That was a very nice lap indeed. So our first three, Sami's come through with a 133.597 as well, so he's half a second off Gallon's time. Weaven's then fairly closely behind, only another hundred from the second difference. And then out into the 135s for the next four drivers. So as a normal Bruni, as Zero and Demon effects all in the 135 region. Then we have another three drivers, Bertie, Strasberg and Santi in the 136s. And then Simo, Simsel and Gina 07 in the 138s. So there's only five seconds separating the field now. That is very tight indeed for 12 cars. In the course of the sprint race, if they keep pace, that will be not seeing any back traffic. So there shouldn't be any lapping going on. It'll be a fierce battle throughout. Ooh, wall contact, that won't count for his lap, most likely. With most heavily walled tracks, the game is a little bit lenient with making scrapes. It's a direct wall contact, no, it, but scrapes will allow a few scrapes before they actually takes any game, sorry, any performance impacting damage. For qualifying, I'm pretty sure any wall contact will actually invalidate that lap. Now, unfortunately, with Project Cars 2, when you are running the race director, I get a race feed that comes up on screen, but doesn't usually refresh and continue on into the next session. I'm not getting any data as to who's invalidating the lap times. This is very tight indeed. Very good to see Sami up in with qualifying in second position. Um, he's coming sixth in the championship with 64 points. We had him qualify in eighth for the sprint race last week, finished in fourth, which is a brilliant performance to come through, and he qualified in sixth and finished in sixth place for the main race. They're showing some very good potential with tonight's race with last week's performance. Thanks for joining us, JK Gamer. Glad to see you join us yet again. We've been still looking to try and shave a little bit more time off. There's not much difference there. We did see him fighting with the control of the car just earlier. Trying to bring that car back into the pits. Using those sound controls too, JK Gamer. Oh, and then we, that's where we saw Weaven get broad last time and fight for control. So the Ferrari fighting itself, losing that rear out around that bend. It is actually a very fast corner. You can take it's slightly off camber, so coming around that corner, we might jump on Berg board with Strasbourg. Yeah, just under four minutes. This is coming up to the corner where we just saw Weaven spin off. So coming into here. So he's feathering the fodder through there. It is off camber. So you need, if you do adjust those roll bars just right, you can actually go pretty good 
going flat out to the right camber on those tyres as well. You can actually ensure that there is a fair bit of grip down as you power around that corner. Otherwise, you do have to back off the throttle and just let the car float through the corner. Otherwise, we will see what happened to Weaven. There's possibly going to be a fair few accidents on that corner, especially the lighter cars such as the Ferraris. McLarens probably have a lot more power going around there. And Jones just made more contact. Hasn't been able to improve on that time just yet. Not much difference moving on these times. Thanks for joining us to Fritz Eskenia. Still our top three in the 133s. No one's been able to join them in the 133s just yet. Comes running down into the hairpin. Nice line through that last hairpin before into the underpass. Let's see you get onto the brakes. Quite heavy, you don't want to lock this car up, otherwise you will just power straight through that chicane. Potentially seeing some accidents occur on that spot, especially when they are very close to each other. There is no room for error. If the car in front of you is on the brakes a lot heavier than you and these end up into a slide, locking those tyres. There will be some heavy bumps going on. And as I mentioned just before, briefing the drivers in the lobby before going in, ensuring that they are aware of the latency differences between each other, so making sure they have that multiplayer names on so they can see the pings of each other. And to ensure those proximity sensors are on as it is going to be very tight, close racing on this track. Or at last week, there was not much time difference between the entire field. Oh, he's just got that car up in a bounce after taking that wall. And that won't count for him. Depending on how much damage he's taken, he may be able to get the car around for another lap to have a cracker trying to improve that time. He needs to try and take off a couple of seconds to get in the top three. Oh, he's just blocked some traffic. We just had Gina just get around him. More traffic coming. Our current pole position holder is going. I think it's going to be hard for someone to come through and steal that at this rate. They've all been pretty consistent with their time so far. Oh no, as a normal just taken a penalty. One grid place, speeding, heading back out. And this lap wasn't going to count for him. That's a costly mistake for him. Did cop a grid place penalty last week in both sessions. Two grid places in the main race. So that will see him jump, be pushed down into fifth position. And Weaven's just stolen the second place. Sami is into fifth, sorry, third place. Human effects is in fourth. So he's qualified very nicely. Hopefully he can have some better luck in the race. He qualified strongly in last week's round, but had unfortunate luck in the races and lost some positions. He's got 50 seconds to finish his last lap. We only really have Demon effects, Sami. And Gina 07 out on the track. Gina definitely got time to try and make an improvement. Make it separate.
stream here is back on. So we have Gallant 350 taking pole position, followed on the grid by Weaven 777 and Asami in third. So very tight positions. The Demon FX moves, sorry, Rooney 9915 will move up into fifth position. So as the Anomal's grid place penalty will move him down into sixth position. It's unfortunate for as Anomal to cop another one. Then I'm not sure if you can see the entire grid. No, so we have Simo Simsel in 11th and Giant 07 in 12th. So over into the ready room. So we won't get a drop out. Drivers now have a couple of minutes to get their setups ready. Gallon is starting from that inside, so he's actually going to be offline coming into that first corner, so he needs to get a very good start. Gallon's usually pretty cautious getting off the mark, so he's had a couple of losses after having a good start at the grids where he has jump started and required a drive through penalty, so costing him a potential race win. He needs to ensure he gets off the mark much quicker than what Weaven does. We can actually dominate that track position ready for turn one. Otherwise he's going to have to shave off a whole lot of time. Sorry, a whole lot of speed to ensure he actually does make that first corner. And then if he does actually turn in too short and cut that corner, he could see himself with a slowdown penalty. And with how tight this is over a course of 11 laps, a time infringement penalty could potentially cost a position. There's not much time between him and Weaven and, and Sami when they are setting 133s. Hey Ditto, thanks for joining us, I'm good, how are you? Need to see you join us for a race again. Right, wait for this to sink back up, and then we'll be ready to go. And it's green, off we go. Ooh, delayed start for Gallon, but he does get ahead. Weaven also cautious, he moves that car back across to the outside so he can get this nice line. He does that perfectly. Fair bit of traffic. We had. 2x2 two two going along in that first corner and that looked pretty tight and very clean. Gallon getting ahead quite quickly already. <laughs> yeah, definitely will be some crashes when this whole track is essentially nothing but wall. And with how the practice and qualifying sessions went, oh, we've just had Sami cut that corner. We've just had Demon FX make contact as well. Not sure. That's Rooney that's gotten his car stuck on the hairpin. So he's now fallen back. He's got that car stuck. That's unfortunate for Rooney. Gallon, Weaven and, and Sami are flying ahead. Here we are into the chicanes. Nice line by these three. A little bit of space forming up afterwards, but we have Sami really honing in on Weaven's car. Was there some big spill, um, spills last night, Fritz, was there? I think that it is going to be quite competitive between these three. And now, the distance between third to fourth position, Demon FX is now only four seconds behind our leading three. Let's see if Weaven can manage this corner. This is where we saw him having some issues in practice and qualifying. He's much more cautious with that bend now. And you can see the difference where, to where Gallon is getting away. Nice 
nice line for my gallon. As I mentioned when we did some on boards, these hairpins, if you cannot look into the corner, it is very easy to understeer or oversteer as you basically have no idea where that driving line is. You just got to keep turning until you don't see a wall anymore and then get on that throttle. A bit of space now. Sunsi's really honing in on Simo in that Lamborghini. Rooney's made a little bit of recovery so he's moved back up from 12th position into a 10th position. I've just got to turn my headset down. That is absolutely deafening as that with McLaren. Oh and he's into a spin out of the chicane. Can he quickly recover? Will he get a safe re-entry as a normal is fair way back? He's had a bit of damage. That front bonnet is a bit beat up. Gallon is only just ahead of these guys. He's only got one and a half seconds difference. That's not a lot in it. Yeah, that would be quite annoying, Fritz, with, with race restarts. Bit of a look like it was almost a lock up coming into that corner. This is where I was mentioning to drivers they need to be aware of latency issues between each other when they are sitting right on tail around these corners. The game is quite good at having you see each other in a very different position. Not quite got that lead on him, but Weaven and Sami are catching up on Gallon. Oh, Sami is very quick at catching up on Weaven. There's not too many opportunities to pass on this track. This is going to be one of the main opportunities coming out of here, depending on what speed you can get out of these fast bends. Oh, he's put that cup into the wall. That's going to cost him. He's got a little bit of time before Demon Effects. He's got four seconds. Here he comes. Demon Effects is going to have a much quicker exit speed coming out of there but no opportunity to pass so he's had to pull that in that car's looking very beaten up and scratched as well so demon has taken some damage along the way and we have a zero sitting hot on bertie's car so he's very tight throughout the field and we saw bertie really struggling to get this big heavy Bentley to turn around these sharp corners. Actually doing it all on a controller. I think Zero will be trying to find a good opportunity to try and get around. He's just got to be cautious that Bertie doesn't struggle getting through one of these bends and actually block the track and then him essentially T-bone him be costly just needs to pick a safe spot and then get him on the exit of the corner yeah he should get around him here for sure I'm pretty that Bentley's getting away very quick Zero struggling to find a line gonna be a lot harder to pull that Bentley up in time he's done it he's got around very nice oh this is going to be a tight pass a little bit of wall contact to do it. That's now given Birdie the opportunity to get back in. Yes, it is definitely hell in that Bentley. Birdie knew it last week when we finished up the race. He just said he was not looking to doing a Zoo circuit in the Bentley. It's not going to be fun. But he's doing very well considering. He's not letting Zero have any opportunity of getting around. It is really great seeing this Bentley hold off the McLaren. See a bit of frustration with Azuro looking for a line to get around. What we want Azuro. How tight. They are very tight. 
Oh, this is going to be risky, but he's forcing the brake. That is a nice pass done by Azuro. Forced the brake. That McLaren's going to get ahead quite quickly now. Oh, poor Bentley Birdie having to get that car to cut that curb and essentially use a bit of a bounce off the curb to get that car around. Gallon leading the race five laps in. Gallon. Last lap of 135. So that's the quickest last lap out there. While there is a bit of space between cars, we might bring up timing to see who's got the fastest lap so far. Fastest lap. Is a 135.635, and that is the gallon 350. So, setting the fastest lap out there so far. We're even falling behind by four seconds. Really trying to recover some ground again. Dealing with a damaged car. How damaged is that car? Can't see how buckled it is. Should have a pretty good opportunity to try and hone in on Gina's GTR here. Nice line by Gina getting through that much quicker than the McLaren. Really holding off Rooney and getting away very quick. It's gone doing quite well around those fast off camber turns. Can he hold off Rooney? Oh, almost contact. Rooney runs wide out into that corner, narrowly avoiding that right quarter of Gina's car. He's looking to try and get around him. Going to be enough to get a pass in the underpass here. Pretty sure this skyline is going to be much better at doing some late braking coming down into the chicanes. Very nice line. Time difference between the race leader and Weaven at the moment is still four seconds. Taking a defensive line, he's just holding line and going for it. Can he get out of these much quicker than the McLaren? Oh, just. And it's not going to be a good opportunity for Rooney to do an inside pass here. Saw the skyline get away a lot quicker last lap around on this section. Rooney making himself known, darting mirror to mirror. Oh, and that's a big broad slide that's cost him. Stragsberg is going to be coming flying up. Can Rooney get around before an incident happens? It's cost him another position, but Strasberg gets through safely. So Gina 07 now feeling pretty safe. He's got five, six seconds before Strasberg is catching up with him. Now race leader still sitting around that four second mark lead over Weaven. Weaven's narrowly bringing that gap in and then slipping back out. Not sure if he's still taking it easy over these very fast bends where we saw him slide a fair bit. He's feathering it on quite sensitively going through there. And you can see Gallon just ahead each time coming around up to the bends. The mistake is made. Oh, in the last lap, we, oh, we've just lost a driver. Not sure who's just dropped out. I think that's Rooney. He's given up with that car. He's been struggling with it in this session. 
And we did see some lag issues with Rooney in the practice session as well. Not sure if that's contributing to him. As I was saying last lap, ooh, Weaven not quite making it. That's cost him some time, so let's put that lead back out to four seconds. Last lap set by Gallon was 136.398, and Weaven a 136.137. Current pace weaving is much quicker. I have a three laps that could potentially see him catch up to Gallon, but at, at this rate, he's got four seconds to try and catch up. Unless a mistake is made by Gallon, Gallon could be pretty safe in that position. We have Demon Effects catching up to a zero at the moment. Seagull chirping off in the distance. You get all sorts of sound effects over this track, from boats to trains, and of course some coastal bird sounds as well. It's a very beautiful track to race at, but very unforgiving. Last laps of zero was three seconds quicker than what Demon FX is. He's got a little bit to try and catch up. A difference in time like that would have been a significant error for that last lap. I've still got that speed over. cars on the grid now. The Rooney has only just retired and we will see him in the next session still. But he's catching up to Santi as well. He's doing very well with that Bentley considering big disadvantage of trying to get that monstrosity around these turns. It's like a little bit of a lag skip going on with Bertie's car. And Strasbourg is honing in on Gina as well. It's catching up quite quickly. Very cautious into the chicane. Gina gets away a lot quicker. Strasbourg is just under one second quicker than what Gina's last lap was. Gina only needs to hold him off for another lap or so. Gallon is now on lap 10. Oh, this is a little bit of a slow turn for Gina. That's allowed Strasbourg to catch up quite quickly. Cost him a couple of hundred for the second. We've seen Gianna in this Nissan getaway very quickly along this section of track, so sector one seems to be quite fast for him. I'm not getting sector times. But he's held off two McLarens along this section so far. Nice wide line, quite heavy on that throttle. Strasbourg going for an inside pass is going to be tight. A little bit of rubbing going on, and Strasbourg gets through. Gone has lost a position to Strasbourg. Can he try and recover that over the next lap? It is now the last lap. Our race lead at 2.8 seconds. Weaven has honed that time in. I don't think it's going to be enough to recover on the last lap. Just starting to catch up with some back markers as well. I think that's a Lamborghini we can hear just ahead, which would be Simo Simsel. I think it is pretty safe for Gallant. Oh, the stop traffic. Not sure whose car that is. I think that's a Zeros. 
not sure who else is in the orange. And here comes Gallon, very close to finishing up. Into sector three now. Only 2.2 seconds difference to Weaven and last corners. And this is in the bag for Gallant. We get the usual flash of the lights. He's taken the win, followed by Weaven, also flashing those lights. Congratulations. Farmy takes third position. 0-1-4-3 coming up into the last corners. 90 seconds to get final laps done. Zero takes fourth position. Demon effects coming up into fifth. Crosses the line, fifth position for Demon effects. Much better finishing position, a lot better luck for Demon effects this time around compared to last week's round. Bertie manages to get the Bentley home in sixth position. Well done. Sunti in seventh. Crosses that line. Gina. Oh, he's got some front bar damage going on. Not sure what's happened with Strasbourg has also fallen back, so he's recovered that position back away from Strasbourg. 40 seconds left. He's got seven seconds between him and Strasbourg. Oh no, unfortunate. Can he get that car back around? He's right at pit entrance there. Flip spin. He needs to get that quickly back around. Get on that throttle. Strasbourg is coming up. Been weird times actually. So congratulations, Giant, crossing the line in eighth position. Strasbourg also showing some damage. He's losing that front bonnet and the Rear wing gone and front bar. So not sure if an incident occurred between those two at all. And then we have it, the sprint race for round two at Azure Circuit. Gallon 350 after taking pole position comes through with a race win. Also on the podium is Weaven 777 and Sami in third. So fastest lap I think still Oh no, fastest lap is Sami, I believe, a 135.482. I don't think there's any other quickest. No, so well done to Sami, taking some bonus points for that. So we had Rooney retire, so he did hang around. So he still gets race points. If you do, just quit out. No points to go towards it. So we'll be having about a nine-minute break as we head off into our break and get ready for session two. So that is... 15 minute qualifier and then heading off into the main race which is 20 laps and then there's a mandatory pit so drivers will need to have pit strategies so we'll be leaving you with some images of some of the lovely hampers available from hamper hq so that's at hamperhq.com.au and they're sponsoring this series and providing that wonderful hamper to the winner of this series. The first hamper you see on the screen is the Christmas barbecue chair. That is the one that the drivers will be having sent to them should they win this series. So be sure to check them out and, and see the lovely gifts that they have available for you to send out to your loved ones. So we'll be back to, um, with you shortly for uh, session two of round two at Azure Circuit. Stay tuned.
and welcome back for the second session of round two of the Hamper HQ GT3 World Tour. So we did just see Gallon 350 in the first session take pole position and then take a race of victory for the first race. So heading over into session two, we have 15 minute qualifying. Game time is 12. Weather is clear and the main race is 20 laps. Game time will be 1 o'clock, weather's clear to medium cloud with a mandatory pit. So it should be very exciting to see what happens with pit strategies going into the race. Just spending a little bit of a delay trying to change screens. Had Rooney Tai in the towards the end of that first race, and he hasn't come across into the second session. Back after dropping screen for a moment. We saw 1 minute 33 set by Weaven Gallon and I think it was Sami. Can we see the same again? Oh, a little bit of wall contact. There's a little bit of tyre smoke coming out as well. Even having that car getting broad in the underpass. issues going on with the stream. Maybe watching the wave when we try and work some technical issues out.
definitely having some latency issues going on with the link to the stream. I just need to have a courtesy of Telstra tech support screen that come up when that does drop out. And we are all back in, hopefully no more interruptions. Alan 350 still holding a 132.7. Sami showing a very fast pace. Ooh, I need to turn my headset back down. There's the McLarens are rather loud. It's setting a 133.3. It's a very quick pace. There's a normal. Ooh, that's a big hit that he has done to that car. Brought that back in. Six and a half minutes remain of the qualifying session. Was the yellow flag out there, green flag again. Most seems a little for 137. Oh no, Weaven's just copped a grid place penalty. I don't know if he's cross line or sped in the pits, but it's pushed him back by a grid place. He's going to try have to get a stronger qualifying position so that he can actually maintain a strong position after taking that penalty. Seven seconds separating the field at the moment. Let's just slow down to allow, I think that may be going. No, oh, that must be Weaven's car. Yes, I thought it was Weaven's car. There's a normal doing quite well up in third position at the moment. That sounds like Simo Simsel tailing in behind as a normal. Um, he's just had his lap time invalidated, he's exceeded track limits. His effects coming on for 135. So our first three in the 133 mark in the first qualifying session. And we had another four in the 134s and then a good amount of 135s and then it broke out into about 138. We're seeing very similar times. The game session time is midday and weather is clear so it's nominal track temperatures at the moment so on a set of softs they can be really pushing these cars to perform quite well around Monaco so I saw that nice qualifying pace of Gallon setting a 132.7 lap time invalidated. Bertie not doing too bad with that Bentley. Saw him really found struggling to handle that car around those sharp corners. And he's brought that into pits. Back out again. It's about three and a half minutes left of qualifying. Oh, they head over into 20 laps. A lot of action going on in this race. Zero doing well for 135. Can't remember what he set in the last qualifying session. Oh, and he's just been that. That's unfortunate. Right on the last corner. Even is up into fourth position. And he shaved some more time. If only had a beat 100 from the second and I can see him move up into third he desperately needs that he does that just then so he's now 0.804 off the pole time he needs to try and shave off another couple of hundredths of a second if he can I think it's going to be hard to try and beat Gallon's 132.7 that is just phenomenal oh and a bit of lag going on may have been affecting Weaven's car, but that may have been 
some lag going on. It must not have taken any wall damage, it's decided to continue going on. Get that car around for another lap. Once again, as many positions as you can to wear off that grid place penalty. Dean's 2.3 seconds off pole. Oh, and he just failed to make that corner. That's unfortunate. He's got time to get that car out for another lap before the final lap call comes out. Oh, just scrapes that wall for Bertie. No reports of any lap times being invalidated. Oh, that was a big scrape. I think it's cancelled his lap, but he's showing a bit of damage to that car. It's probably not going to be up to speed. Very cautious around that bend. That's where we saw Weaven spin out a couple of times before. He's lucky and it didn't happen to him during the race. Doing well with 1.37, so he's five seconds off, sorry, four point, four and a half seconds off pole pace. It's a beautiful sounding car. Good pace around that bend. The extra weight of that Lamborghini holding it down around that bend. just to hear how this thing howls. He's only got two litres of fuel left, so he's running this thing very light. He's probably got a lap left in it. This is going to be a very quick lap for him if it is the case. Very flighty though. May need a little bit more weight in that car. it up nicely for the chicane. As the qualifying is complete. 105 seconds remain to get the last laps done. Gallon is still out, seeing if he can better that time. Oh, we've just had another driver join us. The managed to make Oh, that's cost Strasbourg. Kakadu's just got in, he's not going to get a little lap time in, so he'll qualify at the back. At least he will make the race session, so we're back to 12 drivers on the field. Shame, we only had 14 last week. Four drivers unable to make it. Kakadu has managed to get in, I think he's got a McLaren by the looks of what that is. Definitely does look like a McLaren. Giant has brought that in, Strasbourg's lap isn't going to count for him. Simo has brought that in, Santi is still out on the track. 50 seconds remain. He just needs a shave off a second and he can move up a position. So far, Weaven with his grid place penalty, he's qualified in third, so that will drop him down to fourth, so Ezanoma will move up. Tidy line going into the last corners. Will he improve this time? Sounds like he's on the someone's on the rev limit. Someone might be around doing a burnout. Not sure if that improved his time. Well, there we have it. Qualifying session two. We have Gallon 350 taking pole position yet again. Sami very close behind it by 0.622. Then Weaven triple seven ending at 0 0.804, but that one grid place penalty will push him down into fourth position, so as Anomal now starts in third position. And then the rest of the field is Demon Effects. So 0, 0143, Bertie, Santi, Simo Simsel, Strasbourg, Gina, and Kakadu just getting in in time to be able to join the race, so not being able to get a qualifying time, so he'll be starting at 12th position. So over into the race now. The drivers will get their setups ready. Start off the race. Might be a little bit more interesting. We had Gallon 
take pole position in the last race of Weaven was in second position. So Ferrari's leading the front of the grid. And then Gowan starting on in that inside line does actually have to get a good jump on the start to get ahead to move that car out to that outside path off in front of Sami so that he can actually get a nice line into that first corner. Otherwise he has to enter that first corner at a much less speed. And then it may be interesting because he did get a good run off of Weaven at that start. That McLaren may just get away a little bit quicker. That could, and then we did see the rest of the field follow behind in that first race side by side into that first corner. It was pretty clean from what things looked like on the stream. It may be different once we get in to check the replays. And if you're joining us for the stream, don't forget to hit that follow button as well. Joining us in the chat. Let us know who you think is going to win this race. We see a repeat of Gallon from round one where he took Two race wins. Can he do it again? It'll manage to give him a good lead in the championship. Don't forget our social media links are down below if you want to follow us for all our events, results and standings. Head to our Facebook page. That is sinking. Ready to go green. And lights are away. And then it's a good start for Sami. I think he's going to get the jump on Gallon. Gallon may have to recede into this position. Allow Sami through. Ooh, side by side. But Gallon may be enough to have cut the corner. He's fighting side by side. This is going to be dangerous. He's got to give that position away. Ooh, and that's a nudge by... I think that's a zero. And there is a blockage. There is absolute carnage. Cars are stuck everywhere. It looks like Weaven is stuck. Bunty's trying to get through. It is a complete block. Someone's going to have to try and do a reset, but there's too many cars. Weaven is getting away now. Oh, and they're trying to find that reverse gear. This is absolute chaos. This is going to be a big backlog. Bertie's stuck, Strasbourg gets around. As a Nommel's car is completely wrecked as well. There's going to be a visit to the pits now. That's going to be an interesting one to look back on the replays in the coming days. There's going to be some significant damage to that car. It looked like there was a slide by someone. And then with how tight they were, it was just a absolute pile-up. Our championship leader now tailing behind Sami. He's taken the lead off the race from Gallant. Now one second ahead. For our first three, lucky to escape the carnage of that complete traffic jam. No, it looks like he's in an Acura NSX by the looks of things. Very different sounding car. Kakadu, lucky to have missed all that mess as well. Same as Simo Simsul. A big change in what we usually see in the field up at the top. Yes, we have Weaven into the pits. He's just finished. He didn't have too many repairs. Sunty's are going to be in. There's a normal. He's definitely going to have a significant amount of damage to try and repair. But he's away pretty quickly as well. This can count as their mandatory pit. So if they can make these tyres last the remaining 18 laps, that is a possibility. He needs to be careful not to cross that line and cop a penalty. Gallon and the Zero starting to try and get their sights in on Sami. Oh, and then 
memory has already lost me as to who got the fastest lap in that last race. I think it may have been Sami. If he can keep up pace like he was for that, this could potentially be his race for sure. Strasbourg showing a bit of damage. Managed to come out of that incident reasonably okay. Just really honing in on Giant. We saw these two guys having some good battles in the first race. Giant managed to hold off Strasbourg for quite a while before making an error and then Strasbourg getting past. But then we did see Giant finish ahead of Strasbourg in the end. Both of them suffering damage. Strasbourg was a fair bit behind. Not sure what happened. It's starting to separate again. We did see Gina do really well in that first sector. He was very strong in his pace through that section. McLaren seeming to have it all over the skyline through these tight hairpins. I think there's a little bit of a nudge. Strasberg looking to try and make a move. I think he's going to have a lot more speed here to get him along this underpass. Broke stream a little bit early to try and get in a pass. May have been a little bit premature. May have to just tuck him behind and try and force an error out of Gina. Gallon is now super close on Sparmy's car now. He's got that McLaren in his sights. Chasing him down, looking for an opportunity. Not many passing points yet. Dangerous to try and make a passing move here. Ooh, big bumps as they hit that kerb. I can't even see where that kerb is at to go around. Sami so, um, gets away a lot quicker. And the player is going to have an advantage to top end speed along that section in the underpass. Ferrari's going to be able to break a lot later coming down into chicanes. Front, Sami is getting ahead. Nice line by the two of them, flat stick through the bends. Neither of them cutting that corner too much. Can get that car up over that yellow concrete. You do risk potentially taking some damage or bouncing that car. Sami doing really well to keep going at bay. Pretty consistent times between these two. And Strasbourg has gotten around Gina. We now have Weaven making a pass as well. No, he pulls that car back in time. Sitting really close on the tail of Gina. Oh, nice inside pass. Just narrowly scrapes through. Very tight pass indeed. That's going to allow Weaven to try and reclaim some ground. He has recovered pretty well after getting caught up in that first lap incident. Gallon slipping behind now. Sami is pulling away even further. Now led for five laps. Some brilliant driving by Sami. Giving our championship leader a very good race. There's some big points up for grabs for this race as well. So 60 points for a race win. Sami qualifying in a nice position and he's currently sitting sixth in the championship. So a race win here with some strong qualifying positions and a good finishing position in that sprint race as well. 
Let's see him start to move up. May not be enough to try and catch too many points up on our Championship Series leader. He's, now on, he's currently leading by nearly 40 points. That's over Weaven. If Weaven does finish midfield in this race, give an opportunity for the rest to try and catch up. Oh, and we have Gallon making a pass. A little bit off pace for Sami. That Ferrari being able to outbreak coming into that right hand corner. Very nice move by Gallon. Can Sami recover that position back off Gallon? It's only lap 6, 14 laps remain. Time we can catch up to a zero. And we have it. Oh, a nice flame coming out of the back of that McLaren in that underpass. There's a quite a high exhaust. Oh, and Bertie's really struggling with that car at the moment. I don't know if he's got damage that's jittering about. How much he's fighting this car. He's only on lap four, so he's a couple laps down. He did take a good brunt of that incident in lap one. I think that might be a little bit of lag too. It's quite jittery. Looks like he's lost, lost that rear wing, so he may not have gone in for repairs unless he's had another incident. There's some definite issues going on with that car here. He's Got some steering issues, the suspension's gone on that. It's like that front left is gone. Gallon has pushed that lead out to nearly one and a half seconds over Sami now. Sami's starting to slip back, he is in good form for those first five laps. They do need to pit for this race. Kakadu in his Acura. Has fallen back. He did manage to escape relatively okay out of that first lap incident. He has fallen back in the field. Not sure if he's had a spin out somewhere. Oh, wall contact. Hasn't affected his car too much. A lot of spacing between the cars now. Zero is a couple of seconds behind Sami, and there's 14 seconds out between Zero and Demon FX. So a bit of ground to try and cover for Demon FX, but he's got a fair bit of time between him and Simo Simsel. He's got about 15 seconds between him and Simo Simsel, so a nice safety net for him there. Had bad luck in the races last week. Hopefully he can coast along in fourth position. He may be able to cover some ground once some pits have to be start being made. Weaven has recovered up into sixth position, so he's recovered very well. Zero is really catching up on Sami. Sami's race pace is quite off the mark now. Quickly bring up just what he did for his best time. So his best lap was a 136.4. His last lap was a 137.2. Gallons was a 135.7 and a zero a 136.9. So you can see just why Gallon is currently sneaking ahead in a zero. Quickly catching up on Sami. His race pace is starting to drop at the moment. Some very fast, consistent laps in those first five. We're really starting to drop off in these last three. I'm not sure if he may have taken a scrape somewhere in the cars. It's not performing. I think he's just lost a bit of focus. I think in the next lap or so, oh, zero. Little bit of understeer going into that corner, he had to back off that speed to bring that car just in time before making contact with that wall. That's cost him 
about half a second. Sami has managed to escape with that a little bit further ahead. But, yes, definitely cost him some time. So Sami's still sitting on the 137s, but then Zero's lap was a 137.381, so it was slower. Considering we did just see his lap before was a 136. That little mistake did cost him an extra second on his previous lap. Both of them finding a nice line through the hairpin, through their second one. There's the final one, nice line by the two. The McLaren's looking to have a battle very soon. The Ferrari leads the way at the moment. Strasbourg and Gina 07 yet again battling. These two have been giving us a bit of a show tonight. Race one. Oh, there's some damage too. To Strasbourg's car, I think that was from that incident in lap one. We catch up on Gina. Very tight. Saw Strasbourg make a pass on the hairpins last time around. Nice flame sped out by the side of Gina's Skyline R35. If you join us for the stream, don't forget to hit that follow button and also join us in the chat and use those sound effects down below. And play various sound effects. Doesn't cost you anything, it's all there, free to use. Have some fun. Give a cheer and applause to your favourite drivers when you see. Oh, there's a spin by Gina. He's made some wall contact. Can he get that car? He's looking for reverse. There goes Bertie. Oh, and then wall contact again in reverse. Oh, and he's still in reverse. And here comes as a normal. Oh, he's pulled out in front of. I think that's Weaven's car. Or is it Gallant? That is Gallon, yep, almost got caught up. He had that car stuck in gear. That could have been drastic for the race leader and for Gina. Hunty is now catching up to Strasbourg as well. Zero is still trying to close in that gap on Sami. Ooh, a little bit of a mistake by Strasbourg, a little bit of a slip. He's definitely showing some front aero damage. Sunty makes his way around, but a lot quicker into this bend. He's going to have to be careful. Very cautious. I think he's safe now. Ooh, Strasbourg still looking to try and get around. Strasbourg seems to do rather well with these hairpins. Seems to have them really down packed. He closes that gap in on just about anyone who's in front of him. I want to prematurely get out of that slipstream just yet. He's going to need a lot more brakes than what this Ferrari is, so he's going to have to be cautious not to make a nick. There's a hard bump there, would definitely possibly be a penalty being given to him. Not something he can afford, losing some points. We're on lap 11 now. Our leader also catching up to some more cars. And he's passed Gina, so that means he's been past Bertie Kakadu and as a normal, but they may have been in the pits when they were passed. Trying to work out who it is that he's catching up, I think it's Bertie. Yes, that's Bertie's car, so we saw him into the pits a second time. Well done Bertie, moving over and slowing down, allowing Gallon to get around. So he gets around nice and clean. He's now nearly seven seconds ahead of Sami. Sami's gotten around Gina as well. He's got a fair bit to try and catch up Gallon at this rate. And 
zero has fallen a fair way behind. Very safe for Sami at this stage. 16 seconds difference between him and Azuro. Him in effect is only 4 seconds behind Azuro. He could be closing in pretty quickly. That's now down to 3 seconds. Can the Ferrari catch up to this McLaren over the next couple of laps? It'll be interesting to see if we have any cars deciding to peel off into the pits. Last week we saw drivers lap basically in the last two laps of the race. And I was wondering whether drivers were using hard compound tyres but heading into the lobby and talking to them after the race they were actually using softs. They're managing to get a set of softs to last around Watkins Glen for the entire race. will be a very different story for softs on this track. This is a lot of slide with those fast corners and these very sharp hairpins and other technical corners would be putting a lot of wear throughout the tyres, not just the front. Ooh, a little bit of lag showing on my screen here. I'm sure if that's showing on the broadcast. And here we are, Sami's in for his mandatory pit. Strasbourg's also in. China's in, but these guys have already been in again. Looks like tyre change is going on. Zero now closes in. Strasbourg's just exited the pits. There's some revving going on. I'm not sure if that's a spun out car. Zero will need to pit. So Strasbourg is right behind Zero at this stage, however, he is a lap down. We'll look and see the differences in times. Um, he's so it's about 30 seconds on the Sami did have some no he wouldn't have had repairs to worry about. So 30 seconds for his pit strategy. Zero does need to pit and so does Gallon. It's probably a good opportunity for Gallon to pit pretty soon. Looks like he's got enough fuel to get through the rest of the race. He did mention at the end of last this race he did actually have to conserve fuel in the first opening laps, I think of race two. He didn't have enough fuel load, so he did actually allow, I think it was Demon that got ahead of him to start. And he was using his draft. Just watching Demon Effects. Head into the pitch just before the stream momentarily dropped out. Get the broadcast stream over to Twitch is actually a remote play issue. So it does tend to get the odd dropout as soon as bandwidth is taken anywhere. Plus the game likes to just randomly disconnect controllers as well, which causes the issue. Which is very random. And hopefully that will be last for the race and no interruptions. Go on. Needing to consider possibly pitting. So we're looking at about 30 odd seconds for a pit stop. Azero has not pit. But Asami has pit, so he could 
just get ahead out of the army. Zero will definitely lose the position to Sami. Oh, we have three here. Oh, a bit of traffic coming into the hairpin. Strasbourg gets forced off into the wall. Their son Race leader still 23 seconds ahead. He still has time to get that car in. Serve his pit. He may try and do what he did last week's round and hold off to the one of the last laps. But his tyres are holding out. He can just keep pushing that car as long as he can. Kakadu is still sitting at the back of the field at the moment. Bertie doing much better with that car after getting in and getting those repairs done. So letting some other pass traffic. I think that's a zero going past. So the zero is allowed him through, obeying that blue flag. Lap 17 of 20 at the moment. Army also catching up to Dirty. Dirty will be showing the blue flag. He'll need to try and find a spot to move over. He's moved over, allowing a crew. Well done. Going well ahead of all cars at the moment. to decide to try and pit very shortly. Zero is also needing to do the same. Sami is still sitting around that 28 seconds gap behind Yellen at this stage. Kermit okay, Simsel's closing in on Santi as well. Can that Lamborghini catch up on that Ferrari? Oh, nearly makes wall contact. Here we go, Gallons into the pits. Will a zero follow as well? He needs to also pit, he needs to do this in the next lap or so. Pretty sure that he should be right for fuel. Gallon's quick stop and go, so maybe not even a tyre change. Maybe a splash of fuel. Comes out, he needs to keep that within those yellow lines. He's still leading the race. In and out, maintaining it, not getting correct time feeds at the moment. Zero is now only 2.8 seconds, but he does need to pit. Um, he's only 4.4 seconds off. In two laps, so there is a possibility he could try and catch up. Gallon is sitting a little bit comfortable out the front. 
you could see a couple of seconds of race pace being shaved off. Especially if he did just do a stop and go and did not change tyres, that car may be suffering a little bit from performance. His best laps are 135.142. Fastest lap so far looks to be a 134 set by Weaven. Sam is really catching up on a zero. I'm pretty sure he has not hit. Oh, and there's wall contact. That slowed him down. He does need to peel off and pit. Sami um, does not want to risk trying to get round him, especially if he's about to peel off into the pits. No pitting just yet. These two are very tight. This is going to be a good battle. Lost Kakadu. He may have retired or exited the session. Usually we can bring him up and see if he has disconnected. It looks like he's disconnected, so he may have just retired. Oh, Sami's just hit that wall. That's cost him. That's going to probably be a good hit to that front right wheel that could affect the car's turning now. Let's see if he manages to get round here. No, I think he's managed to actually get through pretty luckily. The zero has not hit. This will give that position over into Sami and then he will take a second position. I think it's pretty safe at this stage to say that Gallen will have won this race. Another double win, taking a double win in round one, now taking a double win in round two. Whereas he does not make a mistake. These two McLarens roaring down the back side of the track. Coming to the last corners. Zero may have pit. Oh no, and Sami has gone off. That has cost him big time. There is enough time between him and Weaven. So Weaven has made a miraculous recovery for coming from that first incident in lap one. Damn, he's struggling with that car now. As long as he can get that wounded car around for this last lap. Gallon's now catching up to Simo Simsel moves over for him, allows him through safely. Zero must have pit, because if he hasn't pit this will be a DQ for him. Sami's so still lucky, he has seven seconds between him and Weaven. So he can possibly still see himself on the podium. Flashing of the lights by Gallant. Pretty happy with himself. Taking another win. As long as he does not make a significant error between here and the finish line. Making it quite easy. Showing he doesn't make that mistake. Comes last corners onto home straight. Checkered flag. We waving out over the barricades. Here he is. Takes the win. Well done, Gallant. Azero quickly coming up behind in second position. Well done to Azero. Stami gets it over onto the podium. Well done. Third position. Weaven, a miraculous recovery, brilliant driving by Weaven, taking fourth position. 85 seconds to get the last laps done. Demon effects bringing it back up in fifth position. It's pretty safe between him and sixth. Demon effects having a lot better luck in the race in round two.
can be some good points to recover after the bad luck of finishing results after some very good strong qualifying positions last week. It brings that car home in fifth position. Bunty would have already crossed the line so he's in sixth. Same with Gina. Strasberg needing to finish his last lap. 35 seconds remain. Be enough time for him to get the car across the line. That sends a normal just behind him. Strasbourg in eighth position, as a normal in ninth. Timo Simsel in tenth, and there we have it. Round two is complete. Gallon 350 takes another race victory, so that's the first two rounds going to Gallon 350. Also on the podium for tonight's race is 0143 in second position and Sami in third. Followed by the rest of the field is Weaven in triple seven four for Demon Effects, Sunti, Gina 07, Strasbourg, Ezanomal, Simo Simsel, Bertie and Kakadu. So Kakadu retiring that car towards the end. So he got 14 laps in. I'm just going to wait until I get all these things disappearing off my screen so I can actually see what's going on. So that is it for round two of the Hamper HQ GT3 World Tour. So same time next week, 7.30pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time broadcast starts for round three. We head over to Bathurst Mount Panorama. So it'll be very interesting indeed seeing the GT3s racing around the wonderful Mount Panorama. So be sure to stay tuned, hit that follow button if you haven't. Make sure to head over to our YouTube channel as well. You can see all past broadcasts and head to our Facebook page. You can see all our results and the likes and any instant reports of those events. And if you want to get involved in any of racing, we've got some spots available. You can also go to that Facebook page and hit visit group and you can join over and see all our events or you can even get out Android app as well, so Apex Esports League, and that will show you all the links to be able to get involved in any of our racing and see our broadcasts. And a big thank you to Hamper HQ for sponsoring this event and also providing a wonderful Hamper prize to be given to the winner of this series. So thanks for watching and hope to see you trackside next week for round three.